We met at Mun over a decade ago. It was actually my very first week in St. John's when we met. After a handful of crazy costume contests and a handful of university degrees, Sib and I decided to get engaged. Sib and I got engaged after walking over a thousand kilometers on the Camino de Santiago in Spain. We got married in winter and a few months later we bought our first house together in the town of Whitless Bay. We fell in love with the house immediately. I remember uh, when I saw the ad for it for sale, we drove by and we couldn't even see the inside, but I pretty much had made up my mind that this was going to be our house. Sib, I remember doing the walkthrough and he said, this door handle, this fixture, this baseboard, everything is going to have to be replaced. He wasn't wrong. <laughs> uh, pretty much since we moved in, we've been doing renovations. And now, ironically, that it's almost our completely done being renovated and is pretty much our dream home we're going to be moving. Despite the renovations and the dust and <laughs> living through renovations with the family, we have loved being and living in Whitless Bay. We have loved sharing our house and our lives with the many people who walk through our doors every week. I'll miss this house and I'll miss the people who have helped make it a special place. After my second master's degree, I decided to start my own music studio because it was the perfect house for a music studio. So I started off in the fall, our first year here, and we had I had a few private students and a group class. Uh, I really had no idea what to expect or how it was going to go, but it's been amazing. We've had incredible support from so many people. It's been fantastic. Halloween has always been a, a special time for Sib and I, from the Mardi Gras downtown, and then when we moved here, we wanted to do something special for for our students and for the community. The first year, we just set up his costumes in the living room. They took up the whole room, but it just kind of happened, and a lot of people came by, and it was a ton of fun. We had, we had a blast. So then from there, we developed uh, the, the Wonderland Theater food drive, and we got more help from, uh, from students, and it was huge. A ton of people dropped by, uh, massive amounts of uh, food uh, donations. And uh, so we continued that for, for as long as we could, really. It got a little hard. We, we even did it with Amélie, but it got too hard when we had uh, Evangeline. After a year traveling across Canada as part of the Action Canada Fellowship, I decided to put my name forward for election on Whitless Bay's Town Council. To my surprise, I ended up being elected mayor. I really definitely couldn't have guessed how, uh, how much of a challenge it would be to be at the helm of the fastest growing town in the province. In my very first month on council, I came to realize that although Whitless Bay had been incorporated for almost 30 years, the town had never developed many of the key documents that it needed to function as a town, not even the ones that it legally had to have developed. So we immediately set to work. We made the town's first comprehensive bylaws, policies, and procedures manual. We created a respectful workplace policy, a code of ethics, drafted the town's first rules of order as a comprehensive guide for public meetings. I also led the process of the creation of a regional emergency management plan, which had been started in 2006 and, for reasons unknown, had never been finished. To help attract new businesses, I wrote a new business startup guide, which I hope did prove helpful to the many businesses the town managed to attract in the next years. We actually managed to add almost 30 new businesses to the town's roster over the past three and a half years. We just have launched the process uh, for the drafting of the 2030 strategic plan that will hopefully guide the town in its development uh, over the coming years. These documents are all posted online so that residents and stakeholders can access them easily. 
The town now also posts its work online, so public meeting agendas, minutes, policies, regulations, bylaws, application forms, all of that is now available to the public really easily at the click of a button. And the full financials are now published every month for every single stakeholder to see. During the election, I'd promised to keep taxes low. We managed to lower the residential mill rate by 11% in our very first year, and we followed this up with two further reductions in 2015 and 2017. We secured almost $2 million in federal and provincial funding for infrastructure upgrades, and we managed to increase the value of the municipality's bottom line by well over $1 million. I'm also really happy to be able to announce that as of this month, Whitless Bay is completely debt-free for the first time since it was incorporated almost 30 years ago. To make sure that the town stays sustainable over the long term, we ensured the protection of the town's water at table and the residents' wells by establishing a 40-acre maximum for future subdivision crown land applications. And we protected and preserved a number of Whitless Bay's natural and historical assets. Back in 2014, we commissioned the drafting of a tourism and business renewal and growth strategy, and we then developed a number of marketing and positioning tools based on the recommendations of this strategy. The town now has an official vision statement drafted by residents, a beautiful community profile booklet, and a new visual identity for the town, including what I think is the province's sleekest municipal logo. I challenge everyone to find one that's better. I prepared a comprehensive brand standards manual to ensure consistency and professionalism in the presentation of this visual identity as well. What I'm most proud of, however, are the successes earned by the whole community working together. I think that the list of these successes just it speaks for itself. We have absolutely loved living in Newfoundland and Whitless Bay. Um, it was a it was a hard decision to decide to leave, but uh, but it really came down to being closer to family. We loved going iceberg chasing, whale watching, mummering, watching the capelin roll, puffin patrolling, and spending as much time as possible on the East Coast Trail. Sib even got to play Jake Doyle on two seasons of The Republic of Doyle. So I guess you're wondering what's next for us. We're moving from the home of the North Atlantic Puffin to the lobster capital of the world. We found a house in Shediac, New Brunswick. It's located just a few minutes away from our girl's youngest cousin and uh, very close to Sib's sisters, except for... Well, we can now drive to uh, his other sister and to uh, the grandparents. Um, and it's, it's also much easier for us to be able to visit my family. Every time we have that, that hesitation of, uh, you know, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> There's, uh, it always comes down to, to family and it always comes down to what's best for our girls and like it's it's crazy how fast they're growing up and we don't want to miss the opportunity of uh, being close to family. Thank you to the many students who learned to make music with us over the years. Thank you to our wonderful employees who have helped our business be a pleasure to run. Thank you to all the performers who participated in our productions. Our theater plays, our concerts, our recital series, our food drives. That was a ton of fun. Thank you to all those who shared their creative talents by writing songs and plays and poetry with us. And to our band members for enriching our lives with music and song. Thanks, Jennifer, for being our Newfoundland rent -a mom Thank you to the besties we made in Newfoundland over the years. Corey, Arwa, and the boys, Jed, Ainsley, Katie, Chris, Lynn, and Mary. Thank you to all the grad students at Munn who supported us through our many degrees. Uh, while we're now spread throughout the world, everywhere, we hope that you'll remember to visit us uh, whenever you're in the Moncton area. 
Thank you to our co-workers at Memorial, our fellow faculty, fellow committee members, our supervisors, our dissertation committee members, and the higher administration. You made working at the university a pleasure. Thanks to everyone who helped Amélie with her epic East Coast Trail hike. We probably won't be able to finish our project, but we made it past the halfway point. Thank you to our wonderful, fantastic, beautiful neighbors and their families. You welcomed us with open arms, opened your doors, and treated us and our girls as your own. We love you and we'll miss you. Thanks for having shared your lives with us. You've certainly enriched our lives, and we hope we managed to enrich yours as well. We'll, we'll miss you tons, and we hope that you'll come see us in our new place. I've had to say goodbye a lot. I've been to five different universities in the past two decades in three different countries. And this is the first time I have to say goodbye that I feel I'm leaving something real behind. It's really, really hard. It's tearing me up inside. But I want to do what's right by my kids. And I know that being close to family them having them grow up with Nan and Pop and, uh, and their aunts and their uncles and that's more important to me than everything I've loved about this place. Um, it's really important for me that they know that they'll always be Newfoundlanders and that they know that uh, this place really uh, is special. Special in because of its people, special because of its beauty, special because of the life that people choose to live here. I, I love you guys. I loved being here. Thank you for uh, spending these years with us. Thank you for loving our kids and accepting us. Um, it's hard to leave. It's really hard to leave.